now here we are going to examine a patient with uh, parambilical hernia again a most uh, very common uh, short case in uh, final MBBS examination uh, so uh, uh, she is a uh, overweight uh, possibly obese uh, lady uh, presented with uh, periambilical lung uh, for about uh, two and a half months duration for us so on examination uh, she found to have a lump on that area with uh, obvious expansive coughing parts right. so in this type of a case when you go to uh, examine this type of a case in the exams so better to start uh, the examination in supine position so in supine position and as uh, we have taken a, a chaperone uh, since uh, the patient is a female patient and then uh, we have to expose from at least CV sternum to the properly uh, 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 to expose the growing region but here uh, for the patient's comfort also I am only exposing up to the suprapubic region uh, from the CV sternum right okay uh, so then we'll uh, move to the examination and see how we are going to examine a patient with uh, uh, periambilical lung now we are going to expose the patient uh, from uh, the CP sternum region uh, to the at least for the suprapubic region. Right. So on inspection, you can find the most striking feature is there is a lump over there, the inferior to the umbilicus, and also the umbilicus also uh, popped up. Right. And uh, the other area examination. Uh, I can't see any uh, surgical scars over there, including a fenestrial incision. But there are multiple striae in the abdomen shows uh, the evidence of recent weight gain. No other surgical scars there. Right. So when you are focusing on to this lung, we can confirm it by asking the patient to cough. When the patient is coughing, you can see there is an obviously visible expansile cough impulse involving in the inferior aspect of the, the umbilicus in between the umbilicus and the, the suprapubic region. You can see obviously visible expansile cough impulse. At the same time, you can see the umbilicus also popping up when the patient is coughing. <coughs> right. So the umbilicus is also coming. Right. So there is something other than exceptional to the paraambilical hernia, some other pathologies also there. Okay, we will see in our palpation. Right. So before moving to the palpation, I just uh, want to know whether there is any painful areas uh, in this uh, in this region. May Kohari Allah read it. May Hari Allah read it. Mama Allah no tikaku. Gudak read it. Nam kiya na samanne kudiya pasdaavya then. Okay, now I'm trying to reduce the lump. Now I'm trying to reduce the lump. Here, first of all, I would like to reduce the lump over the umbilicus, right? Lump over the umbilicus. It can be completely reducible. It is completely reducible. Now you can see here. So the that uh, the only the skin is there, and the I can completely reduce the umbilicus. Uh, the lump was there. Uh, just. Uh, at, at, at the at the level of umbilicus, I I completely reduced it, and and also I can palpate the uh, defect at the anterior rectus sheath, which is about 0.5 into 0.5 centimeters in size. That is immediately or at the bottom of the umbilicus at the umbilical level. Right. Now here, after reducing the lump, I would like to ask the patient to elevate the both lower limbs without bending the knees. Now you can see when the patient is elevating both lower limbs, the lump become more prominent. The lump become more prominent. Right. So it implies that there is a there is some defect over the rectus sheath which is inferior to the umbilicus region in between the pubic symphysis and the uh, the umbilicus. There is a separate defect in the anterior rectus sheath which also gives rise to hernia possibly a paraambilical hernia now i'm trying to palpate it i am trying to palpate it palpate a defect over there in the uh, anterior rectus sheath 
but uh, I can't completely reduce I can't completely reduce the lump into the abdominal cavity to examine the size of the defect ideally you should reduce the uh, complete hernia sac into the abdominal cavity and you can you will be able to uh, have some rough measurement about the size of the uh, defect in the anterior rectus sheath here I can't completely reduce it into the abdominal cavity so I can't comment about the size of the defects in the uh, anterior rectus sheath so clinically in this type of a patient the diagnosis would be the patient is having an umbilical hernia at the same time a paraumbilical hernia uh, which is not complicated with any features suggestive of obstruction incarceration or strangulation possibly the hernia sac containing extraperitoneal fat or omental fat right. so in this patient patient denies a history of vomiting or constipation suggestive of bowel obstruction at the same time patient denies a history of acute pain over that over this side or a irreducible lump suggestive of uh, obstructed hernia incarcerated hernia or uh, any type of a complicated hernia so the diagnosis would be for this patient is patient having a coexisting umbilical hernia with a paraumbilical hernia which is not complicated right. that would be the diagnosis of this patient thank you